Welcome back, spectators. No, your ears do not deceive you. You are officially listening to another hectacular episode of Spectales. Now, in the past, as many of you are aware, we've been known to get a little corny on this show. But this week, we're going to be downright cheesy. Isn't that right, Jesus? Or should I say Beardy McBeardersen? All right, man, I can hear it now. This is what we like to call in the industry beard burnout. Okay, <laughs> I try to make it a whole episode without talking about the beard, you know, but it, it just it rears its ugly and beautiful head again. <laughs> so I apologize for that, guys. Let's try to get through this beard burnout together. I'm here. No shave November's around the corner. Let's go. Last time. All right. Back to the cheesiness. Yes. Super cheese coming. So very excited about that. Um, just uh, my opinion is you can't have enough cheese uh, or, oh, or beard for that matter. Beard. <laughs> <laughs> if this is your first time joining us for Spectales, first of all, thank you for giving us a listen. Spectales is a comic book podcast that has collectors and creators. What is your grail tale? Each week, we explore new stories about the comic book grails we love, the epic journeys behind how they were obtained, and how they inspired new creativity. And very relevant, we also dive into some comic book speculation and how, as collectors, we can help the hobby pay for itself. So this week, Jesus and I welcome one of our favorite Instagram comic friends onto the show. Uh, we call him Ben, but you can call him Mr. Cheese and Keys. I mean, just saying that right there, dude. Cheese and keys i mean what what like this is such a cool and fun and informative episode very we much a, so a blast we had a blast talking to ben and had a blast making this episode uh i really hope you guys enjoy it ben has a lot of great comic book knowledge and i think what i like as well about Ben is a, in addition to the comic knowledge, I mean, he is a true comic nerd, but he also really does embody, you know, what our show preaches and that is helping the hobby pay for itself. That is, I mean, he dives really deep into that in this episode. So I'm looking forward to all of our listeners getting that, that in additional information that we haven't already shared. Yeah. So much info, take notes, get your, uh, what uh sketch pad notepad out and start taking some notes on this because this is definitely an episode for you guys uh if you want to help the hobby pay for itself. Uh but before we can jump into that episode, hey Zeus, don't you have some spectacular news to share with the listeners? Yes. It's been a while. I don't even know how many weeks, but it's the scarce army roll call. Roll call, roll call, roll call. <laughs> roll call. <laughs> The crowd goes wild. All right. Uh, so first, we want to recognize and thank and welcome to the Scarce Army, Tim Field. He was part of the listener submitted Grail Tech Extravaganza episode that dropped on September 14th with that awesome Hulk 181. So again, thank you, Tim, for joining the Scarce Army and our Patreon. Yeah, we really do appreciate it, Tim. Everybody out there who has not, go back to the episode we dropped on September 14th of this year. Uh, we had a couple of listener-submitted Grail Tales. Tim had provided one of them, and honestly, it, it's one of the best written submitted Grail Tales we've ever had. Tim, thank you so much. If anybody else is out there interested in supporting the show uh, by becoming a patron, uh, you can go over to patreon.com and search Spectales. Uh, you can see how you can join the Scarce Army there. But that is enough for this intro. We really do need to get into this episode because Ben has a ton of information waiting for you on the other side of the music. So when someone holds a phone to your head, all you can do is take a deep breath and taste the brie. This is episode 62. This is a conspiracy. That's what this is. Just begging to course its way through your veins. Let's just for a moment speculate, shall we? You're into comic books, aren't you? I'm a nerd. But you do like comic books. Comic books aren't just for sad nerds anymore. Do you think we need one more? Strange things are afoot at the Circle K. Do you think we need one more? Objection, cause for speculation, move to strike. This is a bad idea. This is a bad idea. All right, we'll get one more. <laughs> Spectre, a comic book podcast with Jake and Jesus. 
Welcome back, everybody, to the latest episode of Spectales. This week, Jesus and I have the pleasure of welcoming a collector and comic extraordinaire we've known via Instagram for nearly two years, I think, somewhere in the ballpark. It is our Gouda friend, Ben, better known by his IG and whatnot handles, Cheese and Keys. Ben, thank you so much for joining us. Good to be here. Yeah, man, we, like Jake mentioned, we've been following you for a while. The man, the myth, the legend, cheese and keys, which I mean, let's just let's just start off. Right. Let's just rip the band aid. What's up with cheese and keys, man? Why cheese and keys? All right. So first off, like Instagram, you you have to be unique. So you get, I, I tried to pick a name that would, would stick out a little bit amongst the uh, many, many, many comic book collections. Um, and so I was thinking, like, you know, what do I like? Personally, what can I do more than just show, showcase comics? And so the answer was, uh, who doesn't love cheese? Uh, I, I guess people with a lactose intolerance may not like cheese, but like, I love it. I figure I could add a little bit of flair to it. So three pictures of comics, one picture of cheese. That's kind of the ratio that I go by. That's how that's how you layer the cheese onto the comics. Just Yep, you got it. And just, you know, FYI out there for everybody, I am lactose intolerant, but I still love cheese. <laughs> <laughs> yes, everybody out there listening, we're going to start this off by reminding everybody to go to uh, Instagram or if you're on whatnot, you can find him at Cheese and Keys. I believe it's at Cheese and Keys for both, correct? You got it. Yeah. Yep, you got it. And you're not going to be disappointed as far as comic book accounts to follow on Instagram. This one's a big winner really because the books that you're going after range literally everything. There is nothing that you don't buy, uh, which is fantastic. So your collection is all on display there, but you also throw in the cheese where I swear at least once a week, I'm scrolling, I'm scrolling, I'm scrolling. Now I'm <laughs> hungry because cheese. Because it's like yeah. you, you show a grilled cheese sandwich or you show pizza or something that makes me go, ah, damn it, Ben, now I got to eat something. I'm hungry. Yeah. Now. And it's I'm usually at like that. nine in the morning. So it makes me happy to hear that. <laughs> yeah. On top of that, like there's some cheese on there that I'm like, what is this? I, you know, I might <laughs> like do- that. There's some of them like, I've never seen this before, but I will. Yeah, man, I've been now. trying to expand the, uh, <laughs> the offerings. Like you can only show so many pictures of cheeseburgers or real cheese or, or Gouda. I'm like trying to really like go to my local cheese shop. And we have like two or three in Chicago and like, make sure I try some new shit. So not only are you going to comic shops regularly, now you're going into cheese shops and you're like, show me your rare shit. I need, I need to take a photo of that. No, 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 no. I'm I'm like buying it. Oh yeah. Yeah. Take a photo for the gram. I like literally, I'm going to be there to sample. Awesome. You got a cheese dealer then? It's a cheese monger. You know, they would be very mad that you said that cheese dealer. You got to come correct with the cheese, man. I, I apologize to the cheesemongers out there. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So for those of you who have never listened to the show before, we have three basic segments. We kick every show off with a recent pickup segment. This is where we're going to talk about something that we've recently picked up or read or, or something along those lines uh, with regards to collectibles. Then we go into the Grail Tale segment where we're going to ask Ben here to tell us about his comic book Grail. It can be anything from a collectible item to a collectible comic book to whatever he wants to make of it, just a Grail that is important to him. Then we close every episode with comic book speculation. We all here like to help the hobby pay for itself, and we hope that we can help you, our listeners, do the exact same. So we're going to give you some speculation ideas on how you can go out and help the hobby pay for itself for you. So everybody on everybody on here ready? No, I'm ready to go. Shut up, Jesus. All right, let's kick off that first segment. Recent pickups. All right, the recent pickup segment. Now, Ben, I know you've got a pretty sizable recent pickup to talk about tonight. Uh, Jesus and I actually kind of have a joint one to discuss. And so, Ben, if you don't mind, Jesus and I are going to go first on this. Please go. All right. Well, Jesus, do you, what do you, what do you have there? You want to display it? Yeah, it's already on display here. Uh, what this is, and, and 
first shout out to uh, Jason with Kill Heart Comics on Instagram. Uh, one of our good friends or good buddies, uh, listener of the show, spectator. You know, he, he told us he's been working on something and we didn't kind of know what to think. And, you know, uh, I think, Jake, you got it in first and I got it in like a day or two later. But this thing is phenomenal, man. And, and what I'm showing, what I'm what I'm putting up is a comic book stand, but it's not your normal comic book stand. It's circular. It has two levels. Um, it has a stand for the comic book. And then it has our logo of JJ and the Spectales comic book podcast engraved into the top of the stand. And then not only that, it also is a swivel. So it rotates. So you can rotate it 360 degrees so everybody in the vicinity can see which comic book you're displaying. Uh, Mm -hmm. I mean, this thing is is like the only thing I can describe it as is expert craftsmanship, man. Yeah, very quality. Quality craftsmanship. Jason, thank you so much. Uh, I don't know how I, I was overwhelmed when I opened it. I was like, what the hell? Jason is a very good friend. He and I talk often on Instagram through your Instagram mm-hmm. messenger. But other than that, I, I mean, to be honest, Jason, I don't even know how I think you found our podcast and then you just reached out, which is, of course, the reason we started the podcast was to make friends in comics. So it apparently worked because this has been amazing. But now I feel like, holy shit, because that wasn't even that's that's not even the half of it, everybody. I mean, we we each got our own mailed to us, but we also got just a ton of stickers. I mean, I got a whole bag full of stickers that custom made stickers that Jason apparently made and designed himself. So he gave us one. This is a a magnifying glass that says conspiracy collection because everybody (laughs) knows Jake's collection is titled the conspiracy collection. Nobody knows that. Yeah. Everybody everybody knows. (laughs) And then we have a shield uh, with JJ on it, but it also has our our term scarce uh, for the the scarce books out there. Uh, Everybody listening, Jesus decided to make up a word. It's not a real word. Don't start it. Don't start it, Jake. Don't (laughs) start it. You know know what happened last time? (laughs) Better rallies were called in. It was not not a good ordeal. Scarce. And then the other sticker that we got, is one of Jesus and I's faces that uh, we had Elliot, uh, a good friend and artist. He drew those up and and Jason took those and put them into, what is this, the corner box? Uh, yeah. Jesus, yeah, yeah, it's the numbered yeah. corner box 2021 uh, because our podcast started in 2021. So, it, I mean, and I got a bag full of those stickers, which are incredible. So these are, not only did Jason give us great gifts for ourselves, he also gave us stuff that we can share with people. Uh, yeah. These stickers are going to start going out on on all of our AOKs that we send out for our Patreon uh, Scarce Army members. And I just, I'm blown away by the kindness. And Jesus and I are going to, we're going to retaliate, right? Is that the Yeah, yeah. That the yeah this was an act of war on Jason's part. <laughs> I mean, he's he's a good friend. And, that you know, the thing about it is he's he's a good friend before any of this stuff. Like, this has, like, this is just awesome. It's it's an act of kindness, which is really cool. But like you mentioned, I've been talking to Jason for a while now on Instagram through DM, just talking comics, talking MCU, talking Disney Plus shows, you know, talking spec, just, you know, out of nowhere, just out of the blue. And, and that's kind of what the community is. We just kind of talk to each other, see what people, pick people's brains. Um, and so that's really cool that, that he did this. And obviously, like we mentioned, you know, the, the retaliation will come and, and just, you know, keep, keep your, keep an eye on your back. Is that, is that how that saying goes? How does the saying go, Jake? You sleep with an eye open. There you go. Do that. Sleep do that, with Jason. one eye open or one eye. Well, do what Jesus says. Sleep with one eye on your back while you sleep. There you go. While you whistle. I don't know why, but no, just you do that, that while you work. What are we dwarves? <laughs> <laughs> All first right. Six, three dwarf out there, but I'll take it. So a very, very worthy recent pickup. We had to use uh, this as our recent pickup for this week because Jason, amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, but as incredible as our recent pickup is, unfortunately, I think Ben is, I Ben came packing. 
with <laughs> the probably one of the most epic recent pickups. And the only the reason I know man. this is because he 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 uh, he posted something on Instagram that I I had to sit down after when I saw it. And I'm so <laughs> Ben, I, I, what do you, what do you got? Tell tell us about this. Yeah, I'm 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 dubbing it the Dealer Bag Collection. Oh, see, yeah, hey, nice. see, that's cool. Yeah, I even learned how to do the trademark uh, little uh, <laughs> emblem on text just to add it to all the Instagram posts. So it's, it's kind of a big deal. Uh, no, very fortunate uh, to stumble on something and decide that I was going to spend more money on comics than I ever had in one day. And took a risk, and it's turning out to pay off. Like, I don't know, um, um, over uh, ten times worth. I think what I've paid. No, not at ten times. At least five times worth what I've paid. Wow! Nice, nice. So, you bought a collection. Let's let's yep. first break that. So, you bought a collection that you were fortunate enough to find. Do you mind walking us through that like that process? Yeah, the whole deal. Here we go. So, uh, I'm a member. Uh, I am a member of a Illinois comic book collectors group on Facebook, and and I barely ever go on it. You know, it's it's a lot of guys selling books at double the price that you'd see on eBay. <laughs> It sucks. I hate it. But one day I happened to click on it and there was a, a new member to the group who had posted some pictures um, of this collection. And it's not even a collection. He just said, look, I've got a lot of comics and I'm looking to sell them. And, uh, and, and, and he was saying I'd, I'd like $300 per box or bin. And and I said, I will I, like, look, I think based on what I know about comics, uh, what I can see here, uh, I'd like to, I'm, I'm just going to make this guy an offer for all of it. Right. And so I, uh, and, and I'll pause here is any, anything that, I mean, it was, it was like, it was a big deal because I've, I've got, you know, other shit to pay for. And I'm yeah. not trying to spend thousands of dollars on some random comics that you can barely see pictures of what I had, but you know, I saw enough to know that there was at least 5,000 comics. And this guy said there was between three and 4,000 in his estimation. And he wanted $300 per box. And there was like 50 boxes so why not make this guy an offer to see if he'll take, you know, or, or at least let him know, like, hey, do you want to parse these out, you know, one box at a time at $300? Or can I just give you a lump sum of money right now to buy it all? So I offered him $2,000. He said no immediately. And I said, well, how about 4000 Right now, uh, tomorrow I will be there. And he said, yes. And I was like, oh shit, this is getting real, real fast. <laughs> you, you were like, oh man, I immediately, re he said yes too fast to that one. So was the $2,000 like a, like a test offering? Like you just wanted to see what kind of guy you were dealing with? Like, cause I get it. Like there's those people that are like $2,000. I'll take it, put it in my pocket. You can have the books. Uh, but obviously yeah. that was a, that was a known low ball, right? Like you knew you were low, you were coming in a little low. I knew I was low balling him and just cause I wanted to test what he was looking to get. And yep. he said, no, I, I remember the text was something like, no, I've got some other offers that I can make more than $2,000. And I, and I thought to myself, okay, right, let's do 4,000. Okay. Let's. And then I explained to him, I said, listen, man, like you're going to have people offering you, like single, you know, I'll come by and I'll buy two or three boxes, but like, they're going to take all, and I even said this to them, they're going to take all the great comics and leave you with a bunch of crap. I'm willing to come by all of it 
tomorrow four thousand dollars he said yeah that sounds like a deal and then and then we kind of went radio silent for two hours two or three hours and i got a little nervous and i had to tell my fiance about it and i was like <laughs> I got to go take cash out of the bank. Like, can I take this much cash out of the bank? And where the, how the fuck am I going to get there? It was three and a half hours away in rural Illinois. Like I need to get a U-Haul. I need to get storage facility. I don't have any of these things. Like I have to take, I have to take off work. I have to switch some meetings. Like this is a, this is becoming an endeavor. And, but like, I started talking to some friends. I was like, Hey, what do you think about this collection? They're like, yeah, I mean, it looks kind of legit. Like you're never going to know until you go there. And and so I thought, you know what? I'm at least going to do the $400 U-Haul and the, uh, and, and at least get this storage locker going. And if it sucks when I get there, I'll just, I'll just drop out and call it a loss. So. Yeah. The, the logistics start racking up real quick especially when it's that many comic books that you, don't, you have no idea man it is it was one one of my biggest learnings yeah yeah i mean that you know did you so you know a couple of things when you when you talk to your fiance did you use the jesus method to kind of break so did you say it's ten thousand dollars and then when she flipped out you said no, no, no it's just four thousand because i think that's what's kind of you know the the norm i guess of what, what people do nowadays that's no, you're man. the only person who does that. You come in and hit him with no. a sledgehammer, and you and then you pretend like, oh no, sorry, it was just a, it was just a small small tack hammer. I, I'm sorry about that sledgehammer to your head. No, no, man. Honestly, it was. Uh, listen, it's going to be four thousand dollars, and she's like, really? And I said, honestly, it's not going to hit the bank account because my whatnot account has more than four thousand in it, and I can just pull from that. And, so, and, and so it was like, uh, it was a, a moot, moot point. So, you know, that, that brings an interesting question. This is why I kind of wanted to talk about this with collections. I'm, I'm, I'm a big proponent of buying collections. You know, the collections that I bought have done basically what yours have done, which is, you know, three X, whatever, on uh, what I put in, including time, effort, all that energy. But where does the, the calculus come into effect where you said, cause you said it yourself, right? Like if you're being, like really cutthroat you're like let me just pick out all the winners and i'll pay you for those and you can keep the crap right like that's what a lot of people do i don't do that i like to get everything i just like to get everything but where does the calculus come into play with what not where some of that that stuff that you said that it's either trash or maybe not as valuable maybe run fillers you can sell through whatnot dollar start because i know you do like dollar starts and stuff like that and that's still I mean, you're, you're getting them. If it's five thousand, you paid four grand. You're getting them for under a dollar each. You sell them for a dollar. It's still somewhat of a profit there, right. or at least less of a loss. Where did that calculus come into play for you? Well, let me just first uh, give you the real numbers. It was eleven thousand four hundred comics. Holy <laughs> crap! <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, like eleven thousand four hundred and two. I think was the actual count. So, at the end of the day. With all, I mean, I've got about just under 5K invested. So at the end of the day, we're talking about like 48 cents a book, right? Um, and and I don't mind talking about numbers. So if you're listening to this podcast, like you're welcome to reach out to me. I'm happy to talk about the breakdown. It's not going to change how much I sell a comic book for. for like, <laughs> yeah. You got it for 47 cents. I'll give you 50 cents for it. Yeah, no, no, no. That's not how it works. Like, and, and, and if you can't understand that, then don't like buy comics from anybody. Like, you're naive to be thinking about that. If you like, you go to a, a comic book, if you go to a show, and like, guys are like, if you think guys spent like just under what they're selling for, anyway. But like, look, I, I broke the whole comic, the whole collection down, and separated. You know, I. I, uh, I found, I gutted the collection and found all the great books. And then I created these 24 long boxes filled with $9,200 bin books and just said, look, they're not keys. They're, they, they mean nothing to me. I have found enough great books another 2000 i found another 2000 books that i think would be great including like eight very good mega keys 
So these dollar bin books can go for whatever they go for at whatever time that I sell them. And quite frankly, it's going to be whenever I do sell them at a show or to someone, it will literally be the best dollar bin books you will ever find at a show. They are near mint plus. They are uh, just, in fan, you know, like, and, and, and run fillers galore from the early 90s. Nice. So well, go ahead, Jake. I have some more questions, but I'll let you. Well, I wanted to get into the breakdown a little bit because you did share on Instagram a really well written, laid out post where yeah. you showed photos of some of the keys that were in there. I mean, you got uh, a little bit. I mean, it, So these books mainly, it looks like, came from modern um, with, with some exceptions, of course, cause I, I see that you have, um, a Lobo book that it definitely is from the golden age, uh, or early silver age. Yep. Um, but otherwise you're looking at, uh, the, the image you sent with all the keys. I mean, what do you have? You have six, uh, first Harley Quinn adventures. Yep. Yep. You have a gorgeous looking, uh, amazing Spider-Man 300, uh, newsstand. Uh, you got yep. some wizard there, but that breakdown. So it's a great post for everybody out there. Definitely go look at it if you want to kind of see and 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 see what he got. But you break down forty percent Marvel, forty percent DC, and twenty percent other, ninety percent near mint or better, and then yeah, the ninety five percent of it came from or from ninety one to ninety four. But with with that, like how. How long, how much of your time, you said you were taking a day off, but based on, based on the drive time you had, all of the sorting you had, and, and the calculations, everything you're doing here, it, just in this post, this post yeah. took you days. To, yeah, no, <laughs> right? no. Like, Look, I got, I got at least 40 hours of actual work in this thing at this point. It, and, and then the 12 hours of back and forth and collection uh, retrieval. So yeah, look, I've got I've got a week's worth of work that I did on the edges of my work day and on the weekends and yeah, it's it's been it's been quite an experience. But Thanks. you feel you feel as you should, you feel pretty accomplished, right? You're feeling pretty great right now. This is this is awesome. Well, you know, it's like I've bought collections in the 100 books to 400 book range or 100 to 600 maybe. And, you know, I've spent upwards of a thousand dollars at one point, but this was a big jump. You know, this was, as I've talked to some of my, some of the collectors that I've talked to at shows, like this is the big boy jump, jump into making a real investment in a collection um, and I, and I realize that it's like, it's kind of a one-off because it's not really like I bought it from a collector. I bought it from a storage facility owner and a storage locker went unpaid. And that's how, and, and this guy knew nothing about comics and he was just trying to unload an unpaid locker to pay for his like new transmission in his truck. I mean, that's literally what he said. And like I said, Hey, would you take 3,200? No, I got to pay for the transmission in the truck. All right. 3,600. Sure. Let's do that. Like that's the, I mean, I don't know. It's just, it's been, it's been a fun experience and I know it's a one-off and I, I hope to someday in the future find another one-off like this. So do you, so you still have a separation point between the books that are your, your collection, right? Are they, do you separate those where like, those are the ones that are not for sale? Totally. Yeah. I've got, and the, the list isn't big and there's probably like less than 50 books. Yeah. Less than 50 books at, yeah. at the most it's 50. I don't know. I, I, I'm looking to my direct right right now and seeing these, these black CGC holding or, you know, graded book holding cases. And I know that there's like books in there that I would say, I'm not selling those for a long time. Uh, and someone's going to have to make me a really good offer for them. Well, I, I have two questions and one will get into uh, a segue for Jake. Cause he's going to love it. But the first one is, 
you know, with all these books, a lot of them too, like you said, are 9.8s, maybe 9.9s, including that lethal protector. But there's also some other ones that are maybe minor keys or maybe not even keys, but are just pristine. How are you divvying up which ones you are going to get graded and which ones are just not worth it for you to get graded? Yeah, uh, the number that I'm getting graded is very, very low. It's probably going to be less than 20 total. Right. And I, and, and I think about it like this, like I have no patience. So my grading is always fast track. So now I got to pay that extra. Um, I, I have, I'm not, I have no confidence in CGC. So I have to have everything pressed. So I have to add another $15 per book to have my presser do it. Trust me. I thought about like buying a press cause that's just another mm-hmm. like, it's another added expense, but something that I know that I have enough books so I could, you know, recoup the cost. I don't know, man. It's like less than 20 bucks. I'm looking at a stack right now and there's, I'm looking at a stack right now next to me. That is, there's 10, no, there's nine copies of X-Men number four, Omega Red. You're welcome, Jake. Hey, love it. <laughs> there are uh, seven copies of Venom Lethal Protector. There are 10 copies of Batman Adventures number one, which I'm like, that is a great key. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, but like they're they're all 9.8 candidates. Like, but yeah. I don't want to invest any more money. And I'd rather just say, listen, let's sell let's sell it to the comic book community that wants to make that make that investment. Here, I have 10 copies of X-Men Adventures number one, first morph all 10 of them are 9.8 candidates. Like Jeez. let's let someone else do it and take the chance and get it pressed. And if they get a 9.6, then honestly, it's only like an $80 book. And I don't want to spend $50 just to get that thing, a $30 bump. I'd, I'd rather just do a, I'd rather sell it for $35 and, and have someone else get super excited when they get a 9.8. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then the second part that's going to get Jake happy with the segue is you mentioned the 50 books, right? That are your, your untouchables. Sure. So what, what do you collect? What, what is the, the stuff that you collect? Yeah. You know, I, so like grail tail, like I don't have like a big oh, grail, grail tail. Hold on. Hold on. Well, Jake. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, Zeus knows the rules. Well, I appreciate the segue, Jesus. And Ben, I apologize cutting you off. We are not on this show. We are not allowed to segue without a little bit of music. So if you don't oh, mind, Ben, okay. hold on just sure. one moment, please. Grail tail. Grail tail. Grail tail. Grail tail. We have officially That's entered the Grail tail segment. That's incredible. Thank you. Uh, all right, Ben. Once again. Go ahead. That's the nerdiest shit I've ever fucking heard. <laughs> That's why we can't go without it. We have to have the music, otherwise we're not allowed to move on. Just, I didn't make like the rules. All I do is enforce the rules. The rules okay. were written. Somebody else, I got them in the mail. Somebody sent them to it was, me. It was, it was JJ. It was JJ, yeah. Undisclosed envelope. However, Ben, uh, it, what to what Jesus said, what do you collect and what would what's your grail tale or or you were you were gonna say you don't have a specific one? Sure, I do, actually don't. Um, I think it's more. Uh, actually, I have a good story around this, and and I I know I got this question prompted, so I wanted to mention my like grail goal for twenty twenty two. Yeah, because my my thought process around trying to collect comics was like, look. I have enough money. I can go on eBay. I can buy the fucking thing. Like, yep. that's not fun. No, that just turns into, I have the money. So let's go do it. So, um, what I wanted to talk about was my grail goal of 2022 was to complete a run of comics that are hard to find. And for me, that was the horrific run Don Heck, um, 1952 to 1954, 13 issues, and that's it. Hard to find. 
beautiful covers, not cheap. And, and, and yeah, I could go online and I could pay the money that someone wants to sell it for on eBay. But I want to go at it a little bit of a different way this year. And so my grail tail grail goal was to complete this run this year. And I was trying to get one book per month, knowing yeah. that there are like three of these books that are fucking hard to find and extremely expensive. It's yeah. horrific. Number one and horrific number three and number four is no, no, uh, no cheap book either. And number seven, it's like, those are the ones that are difficult to find. And you know, it's like a, upside down head cover it's uh it's number one like these are thousands of dollars not gonna it's not gonna happen overnight yeah that's what i wanted to do i wanted to set like an unachievable goal and it made it more fun that made me have to like cruise through the auction houses right and yeah. so i i've won things on heritage auctions as a result Right. And it, nice. and it had me bidding on eBay. Absolutely. But it also had me like sourcing on Instagram. Uh, it, it had me sourcing pre-code horror hashtags yep. and meeting people that I've never met before and saying, Hey, I saw you post this. You didn't put for sale, but I'm trying to finish this run. And how much do you want for it? And would you like to trade for something first, first and foremost, and if not, how much can I pay you for something? Right? Like, but that type of sourcing is different than just going straight to the easiest way, eBay. And and it's been really fun. This is this is my jam, right? This yeah. what you're doing is exactly what I love to do. I almost get more joy out of that than actually getting the book. No, it's not quite close enough. I, I love getting the book, of course, but the chase. And just what you said, I mean, you're chasing pre-code horror books. So right out, out of the gate, you almost don't even have the luxury of going to eBay, right? The one where you're like, hey, I have the money. I can go pull the trigger. The books that you're collecting don't just pop up on eBay every day of the week, right? Now, mm -hmm. there, there may be... When it comes to pre-code stuff, there may be that one guy who lists the book for like $20,000, even though it's not actually worth that much because he just wants to post it in case somebody's crazy enough to buy it. However, the point being, the only way to collect these books is to just do the, the legwork. And, and yeah. Instagram is so much fun. Cruising those hashtags with the pre-code horror stuff is is incredible because you're probably along the way finding lots and lots of books and covers that you didn't even know of where you're like holy shit that's a really great cover right now on uh, on ebay there are 12 total copies of horrific available and i set myself a standard to say we are i'm not going to buy a book that the cover is detached i'm not going to buy a book where it's it's completely just depleted. Like it has to be a 3.0 or better, okay. re whether raw or in a slab. And so it became very limiting. And I've, I've got through seven of the 13 books. There's a 14th book. Terrific. Because it was the next issue after the, uh, the code. Yep. Hit. Mm -hmm. So there was actually 14 copies or 14 issues, but, it went from horrific to terrific that next month. <laughs> so did you uh, add so the 14th? The 14th is on your list as well. I already got, I got that one. That one's oh. actually very much easier to find. It's I, I'm, I, I think I, what I really did do is knock off all the easy stuff. And now I'm into the really hard to find or really expensive. And every time I go to a show, I see it and I'm like, man, you know what? You're just asking for way too much, too much for this, and I'm not prepared to spend, you know, three thousand dollars for one book. That I'm really, it's just more about the chase for me as opposed to like, I, you're selling it at an investment number. Mm -hmm. You know. So which which ones do you have? Just so we can we can knock them off. So we can yeah see. yeah yeah. So whoever's listening right now, I would say, uh, right now I have numbers. Four, six, 
8, 9, 11, 12, 13, and 14. So if you can help me find 1, 2, 3, 5, 7, and 10, you could help me complete this run. Spectales podcast listeners, find me those books. <laughs> oh, we're, we're known for that. Just we're, we're known for that. But the thing about Horrific 2, man, is literally almost every cover is cool. Like, I don't think there's one cover in there that's like not cool, not have its own thing. The typeface on Horrific is is iconic. They're just dope books. And, and they are like, even now they're getting harder and harder to find. And the pool is just getting smaller because there's more collectors getting into pre-code horror every day. And let me tell you this, though, also, is it's all Don Heck art. And the cool thing that I really liked about it was, like, Don Heck is, like, Marvel legendary. So this is pre-Don Heck Marvel legendary. This is what he got him himself started as. This is, like, him in his, like, early uh, 20s doing art, art for comics. And then... All of a sudden, he became the guy who co-created, like, I don't know, like Iron Man and the Wasp and Black Widow and 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 Hawkeye, right? So, like, this is pre-legend work. And yet it's still incredible. We've, I, we've briefly talked about Don Heck on this show, but I just want to be the first one to say he is one heck of an artist. I tell you what. Uh, oh, wow. <laughs> Yeah, because you get you get other guys. Uh, I mean, Kirby, Lee, etc. And you're like, oh, holy! I know all that. And they're like, yeah, but what about Don Heck? And you're like, who? You're like, no, 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 no. The guy who uh, came up with the Wasp and Hawkeye and helped create Iron Man. Oh, that guy. Yeah. Yeah. Not to mention. Yeah. Exactly. And there is so much Silver Age art that is. Uh, you know, mind blowing. He, he remind. I know Kirby is the big name, like you said, but uh, people will also say Steranko, but yeah, exactly. heck is, I mean, he's up there with the, he, he's up there with the best of them. Look, and I, I love Steranko as well. Like, and Nick Fury, agent of shield, like that early run when he was in, when he was in charge, he had, he had to be in charge of his own shit. And then it wasn't that good, but like the art is incredible. The art was awesome. (laughs) So like, look, I mean, everyone's a legend. Everyone likes who they like. I did this whole grail goal to do something completely difficult. That would be fun to chase as a, like I could have done chilling or I could have done, you know, name any sort of like pre-code horror or something super hard to find. This one just kind of had that crossover appeal because of the Marvel influence as well. Yeah, that's really cool. I, I like why you picked it, and the the Grail goal itself is a lot of fun. Those we all have them. We all have those goals. Jesus is is forever chasing uh, an AF fifteen, which someday he'll get. I don't, you know, I, I, I believe in him. I believe in you, Jesus. I know you'll That's get it. That's a tease. That's a tease what we call in the biz, Jake. Is it? That's a long-term tease. <laughs> <laughs> but with regards to these books, can we all three agree that cover number three for Horrific is the best one? Well, that's the reason, right? That's the reason why it Horrific is so popular. It's the it's the bullet in the head cover, green background. Um, it's actually a repurpose of War Fury number one. Really, that, uh, Hack did. So if you look at War Fury number one, is it number one or hold on? I think it's. Oh, yeah, I'm, War I'm Fury. already looking it up. I'm gonna get this. Oh, it's, oh, there's there is a head on it. Yeah, yeah, it's it's the same head. It's War Fury. So all they oh my god, that is a racist cover. Uh, <laughs> holy yeah, shit. It's, it's not the best. Oh man. I kinda yeah, want that War, cover. War for War Fury number one. 
Uh, he repurposed the uh, bullet in the head in the bottom right of that cover yep. to uh, be horrific number three. Wow. Wow. Well, in my opinion, and I think I think everybody else on the who's listening and everybody else on the show here, I think everybody should agree that number three is is definitely the best cover of all the horrific. There's a lot of good ones, but that one's definitely the one yeah. we should all want. What else do you guys want to talk about? Hey Zeus, what are you doing? I'm just I'm just looking them up, man. I want to disagree with you. Uh <laughs> but no, number number three is dope. It's dope. Hey Zeus, look at number seven. Number seven is a guillotine cover. It's very, very hard to find. Uh that one. And then number one is like I know it, it goes between three and seven, actually. Yeah, that that's I mean, I would say that as well, only because number three is repurposed, like you said, right? And there's no background besides a green background, and number seven does have more in the background. Uh so I'm going to just disagree. I'm going to say number seven. All right. That's, that's what I'm going to say. Number seven is pretty dope too. You know, they both have heads on them, right? Like they're both head covers. Just, that's true. I think, I think most of them have like a figurehead in the middle. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Cool. Horrific number one actually might be. No, uh, number 12 is pretty dope too, man. It looks creepy. No, I'm sticking to it. I'm sticking to number, number three. Number two is pretty badass with the puppets. Yeah, that's, that's a good one too. Very controversial, actually. Yeah, you know, I could see how a lot of these covers could be a little controversial. <laughs> so, well, I appreciate you you bringing that Grail Tale. We were, are going to have to, you know, we should have told you ahead of time when we do Grail Tale goals on the show, we try to hold people accountable for their goals. So we're going to have to follow up with you, Ben, and see if you're able to accomplish this. Um, you know, we'll let you set that. What, what do you think? How long do you want before we come calling? Yeah, that's fine. We, uh, I mean, I, I set a, a goal at the end of the year and I know that's not going to be achieved, but like, as soon as I sell this collection, I'll have a little bit more scratch so I can, so I can spend a little bit more money than I typically would for, uh, comic books. So we'll see. Let's see. This is, you guys could come calling, um, uh, in the summer of next year. And if I don't have two or three more, then I'm, I'm doing something wrong. Well, if you don't, Jesus will take your kneecaps. That's what happens. If you don't, if we want people to get their grails and we take it seriously. <laughs> <laughs> I might have a different grail at that point. <laughs> <laughs> I changed my grail, guys. I changed it. I'm sorry. Yeah. The, 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 the change order, the change request is in the mail. <laughs> Jesus is going to come up. Where's the grail? Where's the grail, bitch? All right. That's my impersonation of Hey Zeus. Uh, let's let's move on. Racist, Jake. That was a little racist impersonation of me. I just want to I just want to put that out there. Did I not roll my R's enough? Is that what I? You did? never roll your R's, and that's the most racist part about it. All right, let's move on to our final segment of the show. Speculation. That is the speculation segment. It is a creepy tone because sometimes speculation is so good, it's scary. Hey, Zeus, you always lead this segment off, so what do you got? All right, man. So uh, recently there was this somewhat controversial sale of a book that went up um, uh, ridiculous, 18,000%. It's on... um, it's on YouTube. It's all over YouTube. And, and it's Robocop. It's a Robocop first Prince Robocop. 9.8. It was a double cover. It's a red cover. It's pretty cool. But it went from being a $5,000 9.8 book to a $100,000 book, which something might be fishy or not. But either way, it's supposed to be verified. So it got me to thinking 80s franchises again, nostalgia. And also, you know, based on one of Ben's posts recently that he one of these random books that he got in the in the collection is Terminator. And it got me thinking, what's the first appearance of Terminator? It's the Terminator number one from September of 1988. Cool cover on it. Half a uh, human face, half a skull. Cheap book, I think 12, 15 bucks for near mint, 9.8 raw. Uh, um, so that's the first one that I have for you. First appearance of the Terminator. There's also apparently been some rumor that there's going to be a um, animated series on Netflix. So that's the first one. And then the second one I have is 
more a little bit more relevant to what's going on in the MCU. We have Black Panther coming. We have Namor coming. The actor who plays Namor, Tanach Huerta, recently had an interview on GQ, and he uh, confirmed that he is not a villain. The Namor is not a villain uh, in Black Panther. He's an anti-hero. Um, so that means that there has to be some sort of villain there. Maybe Doom, right? So if it's Doom, which would make a lot of sense, in my opinion, maybe maybe it's too early. Maybe you want to say him for Fantastic Four. Maybe he just appears here. Maybe he's a big bad. I don't know. But there's a battle of Doctor Doom versus Wakanda. And the book is Doom War number one from April of 2010. Really cool cover. Really important artist in John Romita Jr. So John Romita Jr. is the artist and the cover artist for it. Doom War number one from April of 2010. Dollar bin book. Go look for this book in the dollar bins. If it does end up being Dr. Doom versus Wakanda and Namor, then you got a pretty cool key right there for you. So those are my two specs. Very cool. Really enjoyed that. I, I like I like the uh using some of the news and also the adjacent collecting, right? Terminator, a very popular character. Unfortunately, they have not been able to launch a new franchise not a new franchise cool. but a, a new branch of that franchise the, s- the last the last terminator was really really good to me in my opinion the last one i i thought it was serviceable as far as that goes i i don't know that it rekindled the terminator fire that everybody wanted no no, no I, well i think didn't it, it went up against another movie that came out around the same time that got more publicity and more box office even though it was a worse picture worst film uh and it just didn't get the juice that it should have but i think i think that was a good a good new way forward in it but it just didn't it just didn't have the traction certainly getting better that one was a lot better than the previous one which was better than the previous one which was better than the previous one so they're trending up (laughs) (laughs) but still way down from t2 yeah i mean there's not a lot you can do after t2 though man i mean that's that's a that's a like benchmark of a lot of you know sequels well i you know what you you gotta buy them when they're down right buy the buy the books when they're down because at some point terminator's not going away right they're gonna soon there'll be a new video game franchise along with the new you know series of films or they'll bring it to television i know they tried that once and uh, but maybe they do it again or something you know we'll see we'll Mm -hmm. see but i like that spec i like that spec ben what uh, what do you got for speculation this week? Sure. So I'll tell you guys the three three types of books that I'm specking on. Uh, number one, because CGC just said, "Hey, we're going to start um, acknowledging newsstand as a different realm, um, specifically in the image uh, category." I think anything Spawn newsstand uh, is something that I would be looking out for. And I say that kind of excitedly because this collection that I just bought had a bunch of different spawn newsstand. So that's me being selfish about it. The other thing that I tell you is that I spec pretty hard on second appearances because first appearances are so hard to find. So I would tell you uh, Tomb of Dracula, number 12, second blade Mm -hmm. uh, is something that I would go for. And then just with the Blade movie coming out and, and, and a new director and a, a rewrite coming, um, the two must-have Tomb of Draculas are Tomb of Dracula 25. That's first Hannibal King. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's got to have the Marvel value stamp. But there's no way they will do a new Blade without Hannibal King. There's just no way. It's like it's Batman to Robin or Alfred to Batman one or the other. Um, and then Tomb of Dracula 45, that's first Deacon Frost. That That's like an absolute must because that's how Blade is Blade. Yep. So, you know, that's that's one to look out for. Those are both on the rise. If you can get one, get one. Just go do it. And then today, new comic book day, um, there's a spec book called Earth Divers that just mm-hmm. came out. Yep. I bought a copy of it. Um, I liked it. I mean, it's fine, but like it's fine. And I read it and 
but if it's a spec book, you got to get it at the at the current price, especially uh, it, the option. Yeah, it's been optioned, I think. Yep. Yeah. And that doesn't ever guarantee that it's going to get made, but it certainly does make the book a lot hotter and more interesting because somebody likes it enough to option it. Therefore, you would hope that one, it'd be a good read for starters. And then two, it's going to be a good book to maybe stack a couple, put them away for a little while. It's if you can get it on the cheap, right? If you can yeah, get it. I cover, mean, look, Grendel got fucking optioned by Netflix and they just, they shot the whole season and they just pulled it. So there's really no guarantees. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. They're, they're even scrapping it after they made it, which is insane. Yeah. And that Long. book that you're talking about, uh, Ben, I picked, I just went to the LCS today and I picked up that book, not knowing anything about it. I just thought it was a cool cover. Yeah. And cool. I was like, and I was like, I'm gonna check it out. And I just got it. And then I came back and I was like, oh man, this thing's been optioned. So I'll, I'll have to read it for sure now. Yeah. But yeah, it's a pretty cool cover too. Yeah, those are my three. So, uh, Spawn, Spawn Newsstand, uh, anything Tomb of Dracula with a, with a key character and uh, Earth Divers. Well, you know, to, to speak to Earth Divers and what you were saying, Jesus, interestingly enough, I wonder if these uh, publishers are starting to recognize just what an option agreement for for a, a comic book does to sales on opening day, right? That book is going to sell out this week because they just announced that it got optioned the same week it hit store shelves. And you look at what, I mean, how many other series has that happened with? So many, like a ton of them. And mm. it used to be shocking, right? Oh my God, the book hasn't even hit shelves and it's already... It's already optioned. And then everybody goes nuts. Everybody gobbles up the books. And then you forget about the series down the road because you either stopped reading it or you forgot about the option. It's just sitting in a box you have in your basement. However, I, some of it I feel like could be for – because an option agreement is not a guarantee that they're going to make it. An option agreement mm-hmm. is just simply them, you know, a studio reserving the right to make – they want to be the only ones who can produce a show out of that content. So it's not a whole lot for these studios and production or the publishers to make that sort of an agreement. And maybe they are using that currently to, to push some sales, but I don't know. It, it, I go both well, ways on it. I'll say, I'll say a couple of things to that. And I'll say two things. One, we've seen recently some of these smaller, you know, independent publishers hire specialized teams that are shopping IP and part of it is is for that, for making more sales and, and getting the hype going around a series and, and all that, right? But then I also want to say that options aren't created the same. And I, I'll give you an example, right? Like the 8 billion genies that we've talked about before. You know, that wasn't just an option. That was apparently a, like it was like, not what is not an auction. There was a bidding, a bidding war for it. And Amazon won out. And now if you look, man, I've been trying to get issues three and four, like more issues of it for the past three or four weeks. And I've gone to probably five or six different LCSs here in Houston and they're sold out, man. They're just, they're not there. They're not there. I'm sure you can find them online. I'm sure you can, mm-hmm. whatever, it, you know, whatever. I think and five is starting to sell out too. So yeah, there's, there's a lot of options, but then there's some of them that were like, okay, they spend a lot of money on it. You know, they'd be, you know, dumb not to try to make something out of it, whether yeah. that's live action or animation or whatever, there's probably going to be some, some buzz behind it. So I yeah, agree. There's, there's a lot more options, but then there's some of them that are going to be probably what we're going to end up seeing. Yeah. We're going to have to learn to decipher the difference between the, the two buyers will get smarter, but a, as of right now, it, it is a very good book to spec on. And if you can get it for cover price, that's a really low entry point. So. Might as mm-hmm. well. All right. Well, my my spec books, I've got, I'm going to piggyback just a little bit off of what Ben said, because I, you brought up Spawn and I'm a big fan of that. Uh, there was, of course, some recent Spawn news where uh, Todd McFarlane and Jamie Foxx are sort of reinvigorating the previous announcement that Jamie Foxx wants. He's trying to spearhead a Spawn movie and he's trying to make it happen. And it's always been kind of in the works. I feel like they announced that so long ago. However, they are reinvigorating it with some new uh, new information. There are writers now attached 
for the the project. Some very impressive writers at that. Uh, some Marvel writers, and so I think that's interesting. And of course, there are a plethora of Spawn books to go out and get. And sure, if you if you don't already have one of the millions of copies of Spawn number one, <laughs> as Ben holds a whole bunch of them up in his hands. <laughs> I, I, I always say go adjacent, go look for some of the, the, the big supporting characters within the spawn line, but also, I, I don't know. I mean, McFarlane, they've done the spawn movie once already in the nineties mm-hmm. when it was, you know, when it, it had hit the, the zeitgeist. However, since that movie Spawn has taken on, there have been other characters, and I could absolutely see them wanting to roll all of these sub-Spawn characters into a movie. That would be pretty badass, like Gunslinger Spawn, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, Go and look. uh, All of these are high-end Spawn books. They're a little bit pricier, but look for other characters. Um, look through the spawn keys, see what you can find. Essentially, if you aren't already acquainted with the spawn series and what the keys within that series are, it may be about time to go get acquainted with what those, those keys are and just look for them when you're dollar bin diving, because I'm telling you, there is a lot of spawn out there in dollar bins, tons. So the uh, last one that I have, which is a little bit of a reminder and it's a retread, but it is October and we love all things horror on this show. We're big fans of it. And I want to talk about a book we brought up last October that I don't really feel like has hit yet as well, but I think it's a really damn good spec book. Hey Zeus, I believe you brought it up last year. Fright number three. This is a book from 1988. This is the first cover appearance of Freddy Krueger. First appearance and first cover appearance for Fright 3. It's by Eternity Publishing. And it is it is a pretty damn affordable book. Uh, it is something that... Freddy Krueger is an eternal character. We're never, we are never going to be rid of him. They are going to continue to use him because he's an incredible character. He will turn up again somewhere maybe in an HBO series they they've talked about that but they're going to do more movies they're going to do something and with the way first appearance in comic books go characters like this you still want to have those too and you can go to, you can do all if freddy is not your jam go find the first appearance of chucky or go find the first appearance of michael myers go find your favorite horror movie character and go grab that first appearance because those books have some long-term value, in my opinion. Mine would be Freddy. I mean, those are all good. And, and I don't know if you've seen the, what the, that Friday number three has been doing, but I mean, it's, I think it was a hundred dollar book when we talked about it. And now, I mean, there's nothing I, less than one, 150 on there. I, well, I mean, sure. If you're looking, if you're only looking via eBay, but I think you can find this book, you can find it out there. Uh, I know I recently saw it. I can't remember. It might have been. It might have been when I visited Mile High in in um, Colorado. I was there a few weeks back, uh, and I, I was just tooling around in in all their back bins and things like that. And they had a copy of it. It wasn't the greatest condition, but I want to say it was like a fifty sixty dollar book. So yeah, you can find it. Just it. yeah, I'm the, especially in big big um, LCSs like that, man. They have so much and. Not a lot of people know what they're looking at, so yeah, for sure. I'm, I'm sure you can find it for, for cheaper than than what's going on eBay. But I mean, that's a great point to just, it, and it goes back to what we talk about all the time: just collect what you collect, what you like. You know, if you like horror, get that Freddy book. Yeah, go find go find your favorite horror character and and uh, find their first appearance. I, I don't think you'll be disappointed in yourself. So that's all I got. That's good, man. Good this has been fun. Yeah. Hey, Ben, yeah. thank you so much. We are, so we're not going to threaten you, but we are going to come calling again, see how the, the grail chase is going. Uh, also, <laughs> just just to, to be on, you know, honest, I'm very curious and I'd like to know, I've never known anybody to one chase a pre-code horror run. I'm sure that happens, but I'd love to know when you complete it. So we'll, we'll follow up. Absolutely. I appreciate that. And, yeah, my 
and, and thank you so much for coming on. This was a hell of a lot of fun. Obviously, we know you from Instagram and, and following your account. Cheese and Keys, you can find him both on Instagram and on Whatnot. Uh, when do you go live on Whatnot? Do you have a set schedule? Uh, I don't have a set schedule, um, but I've been... So that's difficult to say, but I, I, I've been going once or twice a month. I do $3 start. I ship the next day. $3 start includes this collection, but also Silver Age, Marvel. Everything starts at $3. The, the buyer gets to set the, set the price. And what I will say about my whatnot following is that it is tiny. I only have like 13 to 20 people in my room at, a, at any given point. So like deals are like so many deals and I, and you know, and I'm okay with it because it all evens out at the end of the day. But like, I am so sick of watching other whatnot sales and like these guys hype up their books and just, and, and because there's 125 people in the room, someone decides to get competitive. Like, Come to my sale. You're only going to compete with like two or three other people to get that that book, and and you're going to get a discounted price. And you're getting the same quality. I mean, you you have a lot of really good quality books. I recommend everybody out there if you're a whatnot user, definitely go check him out. Cheese and Keys, and also on Instagram, he's a great follow. I don't. Uh, I uh, did I miss anything? Are you? Are you available? Do you go on Twitter? Do you mess around with Facebook as cheese? I don't mess keys? around with any of that. No, I don't do any of that. It's it's Instagram. It's Instagram and whatnot. And look, give a follow on Instagram. If it, I, I do a, a variety of cool shit, I think um, you know I do some uh, some sixty second CGC uh, blind. Those are um, always awesome. And as I'm trying I, to like guess the grade, and I, I I just you know I think I try to be as completely transparent about how much I'm spending and how much things cost and, and all that. And I feel like that just kind of helps the community in it at large, uh, learn about trying to collect in a different way. So, uh, and there's also pictures of cheese. So what's, what could go wrong? Exactly. And uh, have you, uh, started incorporating a piece of cheese with each sale? Cause I think, no, look, man, look, Jesus, <laughs> I, I, uh, I did that for my first ever sale. This is a true story. The first ever sale I did on Instagram, I had Spidey with kicks. He moderated it and I had little cuts, little pieces of cheese and like four different kinds on a plate. And every time I sold a book, I took a bite of cheese and, and, and I probably sold like 40 books that in, in like a one hour span and I've remained committed to it. And from that day on, I never fucking did it again. It was like, it was so much cheese, but like it was very fun and it was a lesson learned. And I, I kind of saw it through the process, but I truly was like, what a bad, you know, I, like I made a commitment at the beginning of the sale. Hey, you guys buy a book. I'm going to eat a piece of cheese. And like <laughs> by the end of it, I was like, this was such a mistake. <laughs> well, I got to say you are one of the good follows. You are one of the good guys within the collecting world. We really do appreciate you as a friend and we appreciate you coming on and joining us, telling us your grail tale. Uh, thanks again, Ben. We really appreciate it. Guys, appreciate it. Uh, take care. And yep. I look forward to uh, listening to more Spectales podcast. Thank you very much. Everybody out there listening, thank you so much for tuning in for this episode. We will be back again next week with another fantastic guest. Have a good week. I never really feel about feel that, that I'm flipping books at until this point, truly like every book that I've sold on whatnot has been like, yeah, but I had to pay someone's price. Like, and, and so my, my concept of flipping a book would be like, no, no, now I'm going to flip books. Now I'm at 48, per, at 48 cents per book. Now I'm flipping, flipping. books. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, and look, I, I don't mind saying that. It's just like, it's a different mentality once you're on a, on a, in a different plane than I went to a comic book shop. I, 
I bought a book for $5 and, and now it's a spec book. So I'm going to get $16 for it. That's, I don't think that's flipping books. I think that's being fortuitous and having the right foresight to get the right books. 